I think everyone who lives with a mental illness at some point or another has been offered the remark by a loved one or a well-meaning acquaintance when they're struggling with their mental health of, well, have you tried exercising? And so I am not going to sit here and tell you that exercise can heal your mental health, but it can be a really effective means of prevention for further mental health issues. And we've kind of been doing this whole project around how mental illness is really linked to metabolic health. And exercise can be a really, really effective form of metabolic therapy. So before I dive into how it's an effective metabolic therapy, I want to share with you what Dr. Christopher Palmer had to say about why it's an effective metabolic intervention and how it helps your mitochondria and thus your mental health. Exercise is known to play a really important role in both metabolic and mental health, at least in terms of prevention. Um, the evidence that exercise alone can, can cure or heal or, you know, remit a serious metabolic or mental health condition is actually not very good. So what I mean by that is that if you have obesity, exercise alone probably isn't going to be enough for you to be able to lose weight and keep it off. If you have type 2 diabetes, exercise alone is probably not going to be enough. And what I would say is that if you have crippling depression or anxiety or bipolar disorder or schizophrenia, exercise alone is probably not going to be enough. But how can exercise play a role nonetheless? Exercise, if you build up one of two things, either your cardiovascular ability or tolerance, or if you build muscle, if you grow your muscle size by lifting weights, both of those things are directly stimulating mitochondrial biogenesis or the production of more mitochondria in your muscle cells. Though the, the mitochondria in your muscles actually then end up communicating with mitochondria in your brain cells through all of these hormones and kind of neuropeptides and other things. Exercise also stimulates a, a kind of a hormone called BDNF brain derived nerve growth factor. And that actually stimulates kind of uh, mitochondrial biogenesis in brain cells and stimulates a process called neuroplasticity, where your brain is just more resilient and ready to kind of grow and thrive. We all know and have been told that exercise can help improve mental health by way of things like reducing stress, increasing your sense of control over your life, increasing your ability to cope and increasing things like self-esteem. But if mental illness really is linked to metabolic dysfunction, there's likely far more going on than just this. So Dr. Palmer mentioned something called brain-derived nerve growth factor or brain-derived neurotropic factor. This is something that regulates many processes within neurogenesis, which is basically when new neurons are forming in the brain. So what we're talking about here is exercise contributing to the formation of new neurons in your brain. And what this results in is increased neuroplasticity, which basically means your brain has the ability to form new connections, making it more resilient and kind of just ready to grow and thrive. There is evidence that high intensity interval training or HIT type workouts actually serves to increase this BDNF or brain derived neurotropic factor better than things like prolonged cardio. There's a bunch of emerging evidence that this type of workout is actually really good for longevity as well. In terms of exercise being an effective metabolic therapy, it actually serves to improve all five markers of metabolic health. These include triglycerides, HDL cholesterol, waist circumference, blood pressure, and fasting blood glucose. Any type of exercise really will help to improve your metabolic health, but exercising in specific ways like fasted cardio or zone two training or strength training will provide unique benefits. Also in line with improving metabolic health, exercise serves to change body composition by reducing visceral fat and increasing muscle mass, both of which improve insulin sensitivity. Previous research has found that things like aging and obesity can impair the production of signaling molecules known as microRNAs. When the production of these microRNAs is impaired, this can lead to things like metabolic dysfunction. Exercise, though, can actually help to stave off this metabolic dysfunction by increasing the production of these microRNAs. There was a study that we will link to in the description below that showed that 
When the body has used up all of the glucose due to prolonged exercise or whatever it may be, certain types of these microRNAs actually serve to signal the body to start producing alternative fuel sources or to start using alternative fuel sources. And this is kind of known as metabolic flexibility, whereby when your body uses up the glucose, it switches to burning fat. This concept of metabolic flexibility, where your body can kind of switch fuel sources from using glucose to fat as fuel, is really essential to having good health and can actually serve to improve performance as well. From an anecdotal perspective or standpoint, I think that regular exercise was something that improved my own metabolic flexibility and allowed me to get into a state of ketosis pretty quickly throughout this project. I've also noticed that when I exercise regularly, it actually boosts my ketone production. So my body is more able to produce more ketones from the fat in my body. So that idea of metabolic flexibility, I think is really important. So not only is exercise a form of metabolic therapy on its own, but exercising can also help to improve things like stress management or reduce stress and things like improving sleep, which are also their own forms of metabolic therapies. But if you're still not convinced that improving your metabolic health will serve to improve your mental health as well, there are many studies that have looked just at the effects of regular physical activity on mental health, and they found very promising results. There's a study which we will share in the description below as well that looked specifically at the impact of physical activity on individuals living with schizophrenia. And here is part of what they said. Physical exercise can lead to improvements in positive, negative, and cognitive symptoms, as well as in somatic comorbidities, global functioning, and quality of life. Physical exercise can be a valuable add-on intervention for people with schizophrenia. WebMD went further to share that some research suggests that physical activity can help with lack of interest, low energy, social withdrawal, and cognitive issues like poor memory and thinking skills. Other studies have even found that regular exercise may help to reduce or lower auditory hallucinations or hearing voices. It's a little bit unclear if this is just a mechanism of exercise distracting from these hallucinations or if it's actually serving to reduce them, but nonetheless, there is some sort of impact there. There does still need to be a lot more research done on the impact of physical activity, specifically on schizophrenia, but overall, there is much research out there that indicates that regular physical activity improves general mental health. This is through things like helping you to relax, improving your sleep, lowering your stress, improving your overall mood, and increasing your motivation and self-esteem. So now back to the very first point I made in this video, all of this to say that physical activity alone is not an effective treatment on its own for mental illness or for mental health problems, but it can be a really, really effective additive in terms of improving your mental well-being and also as a form of metabolic therapy. Throughout this project, I've shared more about my own exercise regimen, and I'm aware that it is probably not the norm for people who are maybe not even living with a schizophrenia spectrum illness, and I get that. I understand if you've been watching me sharing my exercise regimen and feeling like I am a bit of an unrelatable asshole for suggesting that anyone can do that to improve their mental health and metabolic health. But it does not need to look the same way that I'm doing it for everyone else who wants to improve their metabolic or mental health as well through exercise. I do understand that it is hard and most people who are living with a schizophrenia spectrum illness have reduced levels of physical activity compared to the rest of the population. I know that there are major contributors to this more sedentary lifestyle that many people who are living with a schizophrenia spectrum illness experience, such as fatigue resulting from being on antipsychotic medication or somatic comorbidities such as obesity, which can also result from the antipsychotic medication or just metabolic dysfunction. Negative symptoms of the illness can result in really low levels of motivation to get out and exercise. Lack of confidence or stress or anxiety around the idea of exercising or just a lack of resources or encouragement from loved ones or support people to get out and exercise. Physical activity and getting enough exercise is really probably not something that is pushed enough in the medical community or from clinicians. It was never really something that was recommended to me, and perhaps partly that's because of what I mentioned at the beginning of this video, where it can feel a little bit patronizing to hear from someone, well, you should just try exercising to help your mental health. But there is some validity to the benefits that it can provide. 
So what can you do if you're looking to include more physical activity and exercise into your mental health care regimen? There are many, many different kinds of ways you can move your body, things like running, swimming, cycling, weightlifting, kind of you name it. But I think the important thing is that you have to find something that you really enjoy doing. The benefits I receive both physically and mentally from running, coupled with the fact that I just really enjoy running while I'm doing it, have allowed me to incorporate it as a more long-term part of my daily regime and daily routine. Rob just shared that he maybe has a bit of a harder time with motivation and whatnot. And things that help him are group classes or group activities where there's a bit of an accountability element, such as we play on a soccer team whereby we have to go and work hard to support the team. And there's a bit of that social accountability component to that, that makes you keep going and getting that exercise. He also enjoys group exercise classes or personal training sessions where, again, there's a bit more of that accountability factor linked into. These are kind of some tools that can maybe help kickstart you in terms of developing your own steady or sustainable routine. I know that I was pretty intimidated about going to the gym at first because I didn't really know what the machines were. I didn't know what exercises to do. And so something that kind of helped to kickstart me building my own routine was accessing a personal trainer who could kind of teach me a little bit more about things that I could do at the gym. And that allowed me to be more confident in going on my own and developing it more as a routine. If things like personal training are not financially accessible, that's okay. There's plenty of free resources on YouTube as well, where you can look up exercises to do in the gym or exercises to do at home or just, yeah, finding ideas for ways that you can move your body in a way that feels good for you and is accessible for you. It's suggested that you should aim to get at least about 150 minutes of moderate to intense exercise per week. But if you're taking antipsychotics, it's suggested that you aim for even higher amounts of exercise than this to kind of counteract the negative effects of the antipsychotic medication. So 150 minutes a week can roughly break down into maybe five times a week of 30 minutes of exercise. Now, if this is feeling like too much, it might be helpful to kind of reframe your understanding of what exercise or physical activity entails. It doesn't need to just be going for a run or going to the gym or doing like very specific exercise like that. Just doing things around the house, like cleaning your home can act as a form of cardio or getting outside and doing yard work can be an effective means of moving your body and getting a level of physical activity in. Making small adjustments in how you live your everyday life, such as choosing to take the stairs instead of taking an elevator, can also be an effective way of increasing your level of physical activity and thus improving your metabolic health and hopefully your mental health too. So I understand if there's that knee-jerk reaction to the suggestion of doing physical activity or getting exercise to improve your mental health or heal your mental health as feeling a little bit condescending or patronizing, but I do think that it is not really talked about enough as a component of what it means to take care of your mental health and your metabolic health. So I will be sharing more about what I'm doing to incorporate physical activity into my own daily life, and I hope that hearing more about how it can provide benefit to you will help you to take steps to incorporate it more or get your body moving more in your own lives. Thank you so much for watching this video, and as always, wishing you and your loved ones good health. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.